All right, JHK here for the South China Morning Post, SEMP MMA. And joining me right now is UFC flyweight contender, Cynthia Calvillo. Cynthia, how are you doing? Here we are again. Exactly. <laughs> here we are again. And uh, this interview, I want to start with your soldier surgery that you had in December. How did the surgery go? Did everything go smoothly? Yes, the surgery has gone great. It's actually more stable than my left side now, so... Usually, uh, the most important part was having the physical therapy, and so I was very consistent. And you know, just having the PI there, uh, you know, they did. We did all a great job, like everybody, just making sure I got back to being, you know, more than 100%. So, feels great. I kind of, I was like, man, why didn't we just do my whole body and then we could just come back brand new, you know? <laughs> well, I, you didn't think about doing both shoulders. <laughs> Well, I don't really have any big issues with my left side, but I definitely feels like it's just more sturdier, you know? Yeah. After time, you know, it's like a car. It's a little wear and tear. Yeah. You know, the shock's a little bit looser. It's different versus when you have something new or, you know? So yeah. it's just one of those things. Like, I don't have no problems on this side. It just happens to be that now it, my right side is better. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, you know, it's a long road back because I know soldier, shoulder surgery, I've Met, I've had family members that went through it and it takes a while. It's not like, you know, a couple of months and you're back to normal. It takes some time. And, and, you know, how did you keep yourself busy? Cause you're limited in your movement. Um, I luckily out here with just having a good team of people. And then the PI, like I was still on a schedule, but it was just a different phase. Like, okay, I'm not in a, in a camp schedule, but I'm in a recovery. So it's kind of like a recovery camp that I was doing. And so um, I was doing a lot of hiking, but I also had my set schedule. I was still doing strength and conditioning, all lower body, everything else that I could. Five days out of my surgery, I was still in the gym. So I was hitting mitts only with my left side, throwing kicks, you know. So um, we just worked around and I was able to make other things my strength. That's like the most important. Be very, very consistent with the physical therapy because there's times where I was I was definitely doing it five days a week and sometimes it was even twice a day so I was able to stay really busy and, and I think that's why I was able to come back and uh, line up a fight so quick too because I got cleared at like six months and originally when I first got surgery I was like dude I'm not gonna be able to come back to train hard until at least nine I'm gonna be out for a whole year but being at the PI man we cut that time down by a lot and so I, I feel good so they kept me busy <laughs> man if there was no PI you would you would probably be still in recovery then. Oh, yeah, especially through COVID. Absolutely. I definitely would still be in recovery. I, I would probably, especially during it during this time, like the physical therapy wasn't going to be available to me every day, twice a day. And on top of that, it's just like very consistent. Like you have a whole team there, of people making sure that I'm not, not only are you recovering through the physical therapy that they get, but the nutrition too. So they're like feeding me every day running all these tests like it's some cool shit like it's it's really cool you know you really feel like you know as we should be treated as like high level like athletes so it's it's awesome yeah it's like nba nfl major league yeah. baseball all of that you guys are up yeah. there especially if you live in las vegas right that's why you made the move oh yes yes 100 percent. i know they only have this the other one in, in china but mm. man if they make more of those you know because that's a that's a game changer for sure to have that now jessica andras UFC 266 you're lined up for that you know there was a post on your Instagram of you and Jessica facing off what's the story behind that and and when did that photo take place um so I knew she was going to be in town like me even though I probably uh you know shouldn't be looking at opponents while I'm recovering at the same time I'm always looking at you know what's going on in my division so I seen everybody had line fights lined up and, you know, I'm number five and she's number one. She just came off a loss. So I knew she was going to be in town in Vegas. So I was like, this is my shot. I'm a very, like, if I see you in person, I'll ask you. Like, <laughs> I don't play, like, that social media stuff too much. Like, unless I have to. But, I, you know, I, I seen her in, 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 in Vegas and, like, I found out that she was going to be, hey, guys, relax. Guys, shh, they're over here wrestling, getting hyped my dogs um but anyways I, I knew she was gonna be in vegas for a while and i was like dude let me let me call her out now because i'm in vegas and uh before she decides to go train anywhere because here everybody's just like there's so many places to train you don't know where who trains where so i was like i need to mark my territory right now 
So I was like, let me see if she wants to fight in September. This is my shot. Let's do a face-off. So I seen her at the Invicta fights, and and I was like, let's t- do a face-off. Her coach was there. We're like, yep, let's send it to Meg. And I was like, yes. I was like, so I got this. I was like, now I can put it on social media. She can't say no. <laughs> you know, and I not that she was going to say no anyways. Like, I think uh, Andrade is down to fight anybody. I honestly think it's the opposite. I think people don't want to fight her. You know what I mean? But just because... You know, she's she's a scary person to fight, but I welcome those kind of fights. So I was really excited. I was like, let me cop this because she's in first place right now, and I'm trying to get there. So <laughs> I, I was like, yes, you know. And just this time last year, I did the same thing with Jessica I. She was the number one contender, making my stra- my flyweight debut, and I was like, yo, let me ask. You know, you never know. So I asked, and I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're teaching people how to set up fights, You're giving <laughs> lessons out there. Uh, I I don't know, man. I'm just like trying to, you know, close mouths don't get fed, and and like, you know, I sometimes I think about, it, I was like, could I maybe take in a different route? Me me moving up to flyweight, maybe do I want to take some easier fights and work my way up there? No, I was number ten. And I called out the number one contender, and then we had a main event fight, and now we're just there. And so I was like, all right, let's keep it going. I like this, you know, and and it just motivates me too to like not really slack off, and you know. Time is money. We don't have a long time in this sport, and I want people to look at my resume and, like, you know, recognize every name on there, you know? Like, we have fight no chumps. <laughs> yeah, there is no chumps, and this is the biggest fight in the division besides the title fight. What else intrigues you about Jessica Andrade? Of course, that danger factor is there, so you love yeah. the danger, but other than that. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect her. You know, obviously, she's a former champ, so that's going to say a lot for me, beating her, being a former champ, and, you know, her beating the contenders that she has. Usually, the way that I see it is, like, when I see these fighters and have their resume and all their fighters that they beat, like, if I beat you, those are mine. So that's how I see it, too, you know? I Like, I want to I wanna fight the people who fought other people that everybody knows their names of, you know what I mean? These are all champs, and, and they just swim around with sharks, and that's all they compete with. And I want to be under the same category. And so that's the way I see it. Like, I, I just, you know, I want to be a shark. I want to be respected. So I'm going to take the toughest fights. I want to take the fights that nobody wants. Like, that. that's how, you know, build on my legacy. Hopefully I have a lot more years, you know, to build up. And and, and ultimately, too, it's like, how, how else would, would I go in my confidence in my, into my fights to go fight? You know, if I want to be a world champion, I got to go out there and beat the toughest girls out there, you know? I went into the flyweight division. I fought the biggest girl overall, which was Jessica I, when it comes to weight. Then I fought the tallest, longest, which was Caitlin Chukagan at number two. And now I'm back fighting the number one, who's probably the strongest girl in the division. You know what I mean? And so it's like, let's go. Like, let's let's keep testing it out, you know? And, I, I you know, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I know that the, the road to, like, you know, being a champion isn't going to be easy. So give me the toughest fights. <laughs> Even in Andrade's last fight when she fought Valentina, you know, Valentina kind of stayed away from the stand-up in, in a way because she took her down and, and dominated her on the ground. When you saw that fight, what was your assessment of how Valentina approached Andrade? No, it's great. Honestly, I, I take a lot away from, a lot from the champions. Obviously, she showed the keys to, to, to victory when she fights certain fighters. So I try to take a lot off of, like, learn off of her a lot, you know? Um, and I think that's the way it should be. If you're trying to be the best, you got to take you, you got to take notes off of the best people in the world. And so I feel like for sure that's where you got to be smart in all your shots, have really good defense and get in there. And when you get in there, make sure that, you know, it's not a it's not like an like a half ass shot. You better go in there and fully commit it and it better be the right shot. And that's the one thing that Valentina is so good at. Is she's so precise. It's so technical. And there's not much wasted energy. You know, and so I think she did a great job with that game plan and definitely showed me what maybe, you know, the keys to victory to beat Jessica Andrade. That's probably the same way, you know. I tried to do the same thing to Jessica I too. When I fought Jessica, I kicked her in the head like twice, but she didn't go down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, we still got little things to work on, but, you know, I'm there. I, it, it excites me, keeps me motivated, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. And this fight is scheduled for September. That's kind of a long ways out. Was that planned on your side or is it because of Jessica? Uh, no, it's planned on my side for sure. That's why I called her out. And I was like, dude, like, because I honestly wanted to wait until I was like 120% in my training before I even signed a contract for a fight. But when I knew she was going to be here in Vegas for a while, 
I was like, oh, I got to call. I got to make my shot right now. So that's why I called her out and I said September. And I was like, I put the date. I was like, let me, September, you know, because that was the, that was the, you know, I was either going to fight September, October. I couldn't find any sooner than that because I just got cleared about a month ago to fully 100% training. And, you know, I'm sparring already. I'm wrestling. So I feel good. And we want to make sure we do it in a smart way, you know, so. That, that's why it's in September and I shot my shot this far out, you know? <laughs> it says a lot also because of UFC, the last couple of fights, either you were the main event or you're on the big pay-per-views. And it's it's hard to get to those spots, right? So yeah. they get they have a lot of confidence in you going out there and performing. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, honestly, uh, it's super exciting and I, and I appreciate that from the UFC that they get to see that, you know, that they like my styles of fights. And I've been really blessed since... Actually, since the first fight that I was in the UFC, they've all been on the main card. And, you know, that means a lot to me, you know. I, and I don't really care if I one day end up being on the prelims, but I feel like that says a lot for my whole UFC career. I've always been in the main cards, and I appreciate that from the UFC. And, I, and, and you know, it gives me confidence in that they, they like, you know, what I present and I bring to the table. So, um, and, and then also, you know, it's also the opponents that I fight, too, that, you know, it's... I mean, I'm fighting Jessica and Josh. Why wouldn't they want to put that on a pay-per-view, you know? Like, she'll be throwing bombs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And after the last fight, you know, there's a lot of criticism from the fans, you know, people, pundits or what's, you know, whatnot. And, uh, you know, I think what gets lost in a, a person's UFC career is, like, there's evolution that's going on, right? And sometimes you catch fighters in the middle of an evolution, and it doesn't like, work out on the performances because you're trying to test things out on fighters and on your opponents. Where do you feel like you're in your evolution right now? Because it feels it feels to me that you're very confident in your evolution because you're calling out the number one contenders every time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing of it is like I've been a fighter. I've, I've always been a fighter and I'm always going to find a way. And you're going to see me fall on my face a lot of times. And that's OK. And it's really hard to fail like in front of the world because everybody fucking gets on you. You know what I mean? One minute they're on your side, one minute they're fucking against you. And, and it's happened to me plenty. When I first got into the UFC, everybody was like, oh, yeah, she's the next big thing, blah, 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 hyping me up. You know, I, I come short. And then I fell a drug test for, for weed. You know, I got suspended for dumb bullshit. I missed weight. So I just wasn't really having a good luck. I kept running into it. And, you know, I, I've realized that a lot in my life now at, like, my age. Life's in waves, man, you know. that It doesn't get any easier. It gets tougher. You just get better at dealing with shit. And so that's how I feel about fighting. Like, I can either turn turn away right now in, in this difficulty or realize that in my darkest times is when I'm going to be bring the best out of me. And that's where I see it. Like, I'm not going to quit. I, I, shit, I, you know, I couldn't sleep at night if I quit and I decided to walk away. You know, I, like, was given this God-given gift to be able to be a fighter. I'm grateful that this is my job, you know. I get to be that 1% of that 1%. So it's like... You're going to have a lot of naysayers. You're going to have a lot of people that won't believe in you and stuff like that. And and that's all right. You know, maybe this isn't for them. They can't see it for me. And that's okay. It's not for them to see, you know. And and that's something I have I have in my heart. And, like, I, I don't even know what I would be doing outside of fighting. So it's like this is this is the best me. And I'm going to continue fighting until, you know, I, I, I don't care. I'll you're gonna have to break my legs honestly and i don't really care what anybody says I, i'm like really just doing it for my for me my family and and for the people that support me and care about me but the minute anybody who, who you know has no experience in this or you know has never been able like you know you're not gonna have you're not just successful like people that are rich and are at the top of the world they're not they're not just have good days they don't have great year like you know time after time you're going to have bad years, you know? And I really feel like my last couple of years have been a little bit rocky, dealing with injuries, just different things. So I've been very focused and I've been consistent and I'm a firm believer that, you know, no matter what, that is going to pay out. Like, no matter what, you know? As long as I don't quit and I keep working, there's no way around it. It's going to pay off. It has to pay off. You moving around team to team the last couple of years too. Now it seems like you found a solid group at Extreme Couture. You have... Misha Tate, you have Casey O'Neill, someone from from Phuket you trained with, and then you know you got some young up and comers too. What what does that mix of like veterans and prospects done for you the last couple of months? It's, it's such a great thing to experience because 
before when I first started training there was not many girls and not even many of them that were like very high level and so it was really tough for me and I would always just kind of train with the boys which is still slightly different and and it's just so nice to me to just see the evolution of women's and like I have such good training partners now that are females and 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 it's so so awesome and it and it's different to be on my like now being kind of more of going into like the veteran side you know from not being like a newbie although I still have I feel like I still have plenty to go um Matt it, it's great and it definitely feels great to have a foundation there now because the last two years have been rocky. I mean, I, I haven't had the same people in my corner for the last three fights. And most people don't understand how huge that is and how big that is to to just have new people in my corner for the last couple of fights, it, 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 being at the highest level, you know, and being up to, having these top fights. Like, it's it's really difficult, but you got to just kind of keep chucking and stuff like that. And, and, you know, those are the other factors. That's why you have to, like... Remember to stay grounded and don't let any of that that negativity get through and stuff. But uh, being able to train with all those people helps out. You know, we we have we definitely created a a good place to train there at Extreme Couture. Plenty of training partners and at Tam Planet as well. So um, definitely feel like I'm in a good place and I'm super grateful for all the training partners that I have now. Who who is going to be in your corner? Do you have you figured that out yet, or is it something you're going to do later? Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to be having a. Uh, I'm going to be having coach Jimmy Gifford, which I had in my last fight, and uh, Casey Halstead. But I'm also going to be working with Eddie Barocco and with Eric Nixon as well. Um, it's a little bit tough. We just have so many fighters, but it's like oh, I'm going to have them, and they'll probably have one training partner. If I, I wish I could have, like, a whole team of them, but it would be a little bit too chaotic, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but luckily, you know, it's just so nice, you know. I feel like there's a lot of coaches there, and I have my certain set coaches, but everybody's just kind of seeing in, you know. Even if they might not be in my corner, they're still there watching and, and helping me out. So it's it's awesome. Building that dream team for yourself. Mm -hmm. I love it. How do you see this fight against Andrade? Like, you know, a lot of people will think a certain way, but I love to hear the fighter's perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think that... Uh, I'm going to be very smart with my shots. I, for the first time, I get to be the fighter with the longer range, you know? And obviously, like I said, watching her compete against Valentina showed me a lot, um, you know, as far as how we should go in there and beat her. And I feel like if, if we're smart and we don't go reckless and play her game, which I think it's a game of just wreck it ball, you know, just like fucking wreck them and throw them out there, which is what I'm not going to try to do with her, you know? Uh, so I just want to be really smart, uh, find the right shots, have good defense, and then get in there when I want to get, control her. And whether it's like with ground and pound, you know, or getting a crucifix or a submission, I'm, I'm very confident in that. Like, uh, I've been working a lot, like, especially being out, being out here in 10th Planet. Now that I get to do nogi, like, you can do nogi every day. Back before, although grappling is like my strength, I, I was only able to practice so many times because all the other classes were gi and they would only grapple nogi twice a week. Here it's like every week, so I get to practice my strength like every day. So, so it makes me super excited and way more confident to really showcase like more of my ninja moves. I I, I really feel like I've only showed people like maybe 50% of what I can do honestly, and so I'm I'm really stoked. Uh, so I feel like that's where my victory is gonna be is have good defense, you know, pick my shots and and go in there for the kill and and when I get the takedown and and do as I please. <laughs> all right i'm excited for it it's a great matchup now i want to pick your brain on a couple topics on the flyweight division the first one is of course lauren murphy logically she should get the next title shot but the ufc and dana white they don't seem too locked in on that they're somewhat hesitant on like naming her as the next title challenger why do you think they don't want to commit to her against valentina to be honest like uh it might just be something to do with like a needle mover. You know what I mean? And, um, cause rightfully so, like, I think Lauren's next. I mean, she's been winning her fight. She's been calling them um, like, why not? And, and Valentina's down to fight. It's not like anybody else is like trying to like put in like, you know, my turn is going to come. Like they can fight whenever this year and then my turn will come, you know? So I feel like there's not really a big reason. To, I, I think she's next. Maybe they, they're might not naming her, but it just, seems like unless they're thinking some 
fucking magical unicorn's gonna come out of nowhere who's like a superstar. But honestly, I really do feel like it's it's all about just like them trying to sell fights. It kind of kind of kind of like you know what they're do- doing doing to Francis, which is kind of a little irritating. You know what I mean? It's like this this man just won the title three months ago, went to his home country to go open a gym and help his people. And they're trying to force him to fight on a certain date. And he said September, and they said, no, we want you to fight sooner, so we're making an interim title now. Like, that's crazy, you know what I mean? And I just think it's because they want to sell these fights, and they just want to sell, and they just want to make a ton of money. And, I mean, it's just... It's just, like, you know what I mean? Like, they're they're trying to take care of other people who are, who are just... They, they just want views, you know? And I don't know if they feel like they can make that big of an exciting fight, or I don't know what their deal is, but... I think for sure Lauren's the one that's up next. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against that. Obviously, I would have loved to fight Lauren when we were set to fight, but things happen. I deal with an injury. She goes out there. She went on a, you know, one or two fights after that, and so why not let her have it? You know, it's either going to be her or JoJo. They're going to give the fight to JoJo, and you know, so I see why not. So hopefully the UFC does what's right, but who fucking knows? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Who knows? And how do you see that fight playing out? What 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 are the chances of Lauren Murphy dethroning Valentina Shevchenko? Lauren's like that blue collar, like just tough, nitty gritty fighter. I don't see anything super that stands out to me. Like she's a precision striker or she's like a submission specialist, you know? Because usually, obviously, she doesn't really get finishes that very often um, at all. They're usually decisions, you know, and they're very like sliding through. It's like splits, you know, and so. You don't really have that problem with Valentina. They're always just one-sided for the most part. You know, every once in a while she'll run into a little problem, but she always just comes, you know. And it's, it's, it's really hard for me to really see Lauren give her a super tough job. I think there's the one thing that people wanted to do with Valentina is like, oh, we're going to go over there and just hold her. And, you know, maybe if we hold her up against the fence or hold her down, which is what Jennifer Amaya tried to do, you know, but eventually... She, you know, she got up and, and finished the job. So um, I just don't see Lauren Lauren winning that fight. Just, you know, um, yeah, just I, it's just at a different level, you know. And it's really hard. I, don't, I think for anybody, it's really hard to for anybody to see Valentina lose against anybody. I don't really think they're giving any of us a shot. So it's like what's it, most important is that we believe and we keep winning these fights, you know. Like I, I believe I can beat Valentina you know, for sure, 100 percent. I really, truly believe it. And I'm sure Lauren believes the same thing, too. So um, but me on the outside perspective, I probably don't see that for her. And, and you mentioned like maybe a possibly a unicorn coming in. Tatiana <laughs> Soros, she's jumping yeah. up to flyweight. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is something that, you know, that the UFC wanted, right, for her to that go was, up. It's surprising to me. I mean, that was a good setup for Tatiana, you know, I mean, like, like I said, me. <laughs> Me, I could have tried to go take the easier route. I said no, give me the number one contender because she was, she was, she was like headed on her way for a title shot, the strawweight division. She's undefeated, so it's really surprising to me. Because uh, like I remember, I called Tatiana out and she said she wanted to fight me because I was ranked lower than her. But now she's moving to the flyweight division, and guess who's ranked higher than her when she fights? Even if she's Roxanne, it's gonna be me. So. Uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of special unicorn she is, but she's going to have to fight me first. No, okay, kidding. okay. Um, were you surprised uh, by the matchup, though? Like, Roxanne, uh, do you think, like, people are underestimating Roxanne? Yeah, I mean, because she's just, man, she's just got a, she's got a lot of mileage on her when it comes to fights. A lot. You know what I mean? And you look at her record, and you're like, she's probably, she's got the most fights in, uh, female fights in ever. Like, I think, I don't know. Like, MMA fights. And, um it's she's just I don't know you know I don't know I don't know if she's gonna be able to keep up with with uh with Tatiana's like wrestling and stuff obviously they're both grapplers but I just feel like sometimes there's a reason why really good wrestlers when they first do jujitsu competition they never go in as white belts they go in as blue belts because if they have really good top control you know and and, and that's where we, we kind of see it there you know, with both of them. And it's like, oh, okay, well, we're going to put, we're going to just wrestle her. And then this grappler, he's got a lot of mileage on there. Tatiana, yeah, she's coming from an injury, but she's still younger. She's not, I don't feel like she might have the same wear and tear, you know? So I just, 
I just don't see, I just think it's a good fight for Tatiana, I think. And I think that's what most people think as well, you know, especially her being undefeated, having the wrestling. So I was, I was surprised with that. And I was like, well, okay, well, I guess that's a good way to get warmed up into the flyweight division. Exactly. So. And if she beats Roxy, she gets on the mic and does cuts a promo. You never know what could happen in this division, yeah. right? Yeah, you never know, but I'm pretty sure that they'll for sure want to sell a fight like that. And I think, I think they definitely maybe do want to give her that, uh, build it up a little bit, you know, keep that undefeated record so that when she does fight Valentina, it's going to be like, oh shit, big ass commercials and shit, like undefeated fighter, rare fucking wrestler. She's going to be the one to stop Valentina, dun, 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 you know, we're all just big old movie and stuff. Cause that's what they want. <laughs> exactly, they want the theatrics, you know. So, what what can you do, you know? But anyways, you are back, <laughs> September twenty fifth, pay per view UFC two sixty six. Location is undetermined, but I bet you you want to be at the T Mobile Arena, probably, right? Yeah, I definitely hope that it's here in Vegas. I want to fight in front of a crowd again. I miss it, and I want my family to be there. So. Uh, it'd be huge, you know. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to get my dad to just. Uh, he's yet to see me fight live in the UFC. I take him to go see fights live, but I just, you know, I'm trying to. My daddy's getting old, so uh, hopefully, the more that I can find closer to the home, the better, so I can have him there with me. Yeah, dad, dad, you gotta go there live. This is the one. If you're gonna go to one, this is the one. Thank you, Cynthia, for the time, and uh, hopefully, we chat again, and it's gonna be, you know, the next big fight. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, as always. Stick a move in the rain. You can hit me with the words you fling.